you know, when it's your time, you're going to have to send me a message so I know you got to heaven. And he's like, okay, what do you want? And I said, I want a blue butterfly. He goes, why not a cardinal? I said, everybody asks for a cardinal. This is Touched by Heaven. Everyday encounters with God, those moments when heaven and earth collide and we see God. We see his hand reaching out to us, attempting to get our attention, inviting us into a closer relationship. Here we share stories of encounter with angels, divine intervention, prophetic dreams, visions, near-death experiences, big and little God incidents. I'm your host, Trapper Jack. Welcome. I am so glad you're here for episode 195, Blue Butterflies Sent from Heaven. You know, I was probably about six years old in my peak butterfly catching days. You know, my buddy and I, John, would go out there with our homemade butterfly nets. And there were a lot of white ones and yellow ones, I remember. And then the granddaddy of them all, if you could catch a monarch. Oh, they were just so gorgeous. Later, I remember learning that uh, the monarch would travel as much as 2,000 miles in their migration from Canada down to Mexico, grab a quick tan, head on back. Really, guys, was it, is, is it really worth it? Vanity, oh, vanity. Uh, 2,000 miles. What about a journey from heaven to here, to earth? A message delivered from heaven to earth via a blue butterfly. We talk often in these episodes of how, how merciful and wonderful our God is that he sends their okay messages. Sometimes it's dimes. We've talked about that. It could be roses. It could be something specific to you. It means something to you. We get a lot of those stories. In this particular episode, it's blue butterflies. So we're going to talk to Esther. Paging Esther, paging Esther. <laughs> Believe it or not, I knew three other Esthers between my high school and college career. Were you the Brittany of your time? Were you the Ashley of your time? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but we were all we were all mutually excited because it's like nobody else, you know, had heard the name Esther, and then all of a sudden there's three of us together in the class. <laughs> ah, looky there. Well, what a delight to talk to you. This is so nice. Actually, the butterfly story is really about my husband. Um, he struggled trying to find God and to have faith. He was always jealous of my strong faith and wished he had it. And I tried to share it with him. But uh, what did he tell me at one point? He said, I'm too much of a scientist. And I'm like, well, you know, Yes, there is science, but then there's faith. And I, you know, uh, he got cancer um, a year ago in October, and it was a very aggressive cancer. And it, he felt like a hypocrite because all of a sudden now he's calling on God to save him. I assured him that. God was welcoming him back with open arms that, you know, the story of the prodigal son. And um, I got him to go to church with me. Uh, Father John was wonderful. He's looking for answers. He wants God to give him a message. Um, <laughs> so the, the joke was, as I'm trying to help him find peace and find God and to make sense out of his disease and everything. We would talk a lot about it and I would share, you know, shows on Netflix and stuff that had to do with life after life. And we would, we would talk about it. And so I jokingly one day said to him, you know, when it's your time, you're going to have to send me a message. So I know you got to heaven. And he's like, okay, what do you want? And I said, I want a blue butterfly. And he goes, Really? He goes, they don't have blue butterflies around us. And I says, well, that's what I want. He goes, why not a cardinal? I said, everybody asks for a cardinal. I said, I want something that I know it's going to, I'm going to know it's from you. And it became like the family joke. The kids were in on it and everything. And I would always tease him about, don't forget, you have to send me my blue butterfly. Um, and he's like, where am I going to find a blue butterfly? He says, you're going to be in heaven. You, you'll you be able to pull some strings. You'll find a blue butterfly. Sure enough, um, he was at home when he passed. We had hospice at home. The morning he passed, they came to get his body, and my son couldn't stand to be in the house to see it, so he went outside. And uh, so my son's name is Chris, and he comes running back in the house, 
tears are streaming down his face and he shoves his phone into my face. And he says, Mom, he did it. And there is this butterfly that my son got a picture of. He, he said that uh, while he was outside um, on the bush right next to where he was standing, this blue butterfly landed right there, stuck around long enough for him to get his camera, his you know, phone out and take a couple pictures. He watched it fly. It landed on the transport vehicle before it flew away. To this day, I'm just so happy that my son was the one that saw it. I didn't physically have to see the blue butterfly, but my son needed to see that. And uh, so I'm very grateful that, you know, Kevin found his, you know, found his miracle to send to us. <laughs> Isn't God great? He's just so mm -hmm. good. He's so good. And like you say, you didn't need it more. Your son needed it. That's who needed it. Right. How beautiful. How beautiful. Have you seen any blue butterflies since? Uh, yeah, actually, my daughter and I were on a bike ride on the towpath, and we were with a bunch of friends, and my daughter is a couple bikes behind me, and she's yelling to me, Dad says hello. And I'm like, what? And she goes, Dad says hello. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I stopped, and she goes, yeah, he nearly hit me in the forehead. So a blue butterfly happened to come into her path, almost hit her in the, in the face. And she said, so dad was here. <laughs> he says, well, I'm glad. So, so both your son and your daughter get in on this. Yes. That's cool. You know, one of the beauties of doing a, a podcast with almost 200 episodes now is that when you hear a story like this, you go, remember? Remember that one episode? Uh, which one was it? And it was, uh, I went looking. It's called Feathers from Heaven. More winged creatures. More messages from heaven. More messages from loved ones. Um, more mercy of God to say, they're okay. I got them, you know? Uh, and uh, if, if I may wax nostalgic here for a bit, because it had to do, uh, I'll play just little bits here, because it just, they're, just, they're just such great messages. I mean, it's, it's all the same, right? There is an afterlife. There is a heaven, there is a God, he is merciful, and we go on. And sometimes God says, sure, I'll help you out here. We'll do a little message here through butterflies or birds or whatever it happens to be. I'm thinking back to uh, Charles, Charles living down in Florida. He owns these huge birds, you know, the macaws and the cockatiels, cockatoos, caca, whatever those, big, big birds, right? And his wife took one of the white feathers, one of those huge white feathers, and put it in a book and sent it to somebody. And the timing couldn't have been more perfect. And she got this story back from this woman. The woman relayed the story that when her son was about six, he was, uh, she had her mother move in with her uh, because she was in poor health and not expected to live a long time. And the little boy was sitting on grandma's bed and he was talking with her and he was asking her, point direct questions and he he asked her if she was dying and she said yes and he asked her if she was going to go to heaven and she says well I, I really think so and uh he says well how will i know grandma and she says i will one day i'll send you a white feather and so uh six years passes and then we send the book with a white feather in it and so the, the mother was home from work, and she'd ask her son. Well, she says, oh, I saw uh, that my book came in. Would you mind going and get it, getting it for me? And so the boy was walking back to mom and unwrapping the book and thumbing and flip through the pages, and this white feather falls out. And they both see the feather fall to the floor, and they both start crying. And that's when she told us the story that grandma had finally sent grandson the, the white feather. <laughs> That had to be stunning, the odds. <laughs> Don't you know it? It, it, it freaked us out. I mean, oh, goosebumps. Wow. I'm still, still uh, to this right day. Right now. I got them right now, too, pal. I got them right now. When I was working before retirement, I was a home inspector, and I dealt a whole lot with real estate agents, and there was occasions when a, an agent would have to show up at a vacant house and unlock the door for me and let me in. And so this one particular agent uh, showed up to do that, and I said, Oh, guess what? Guess what happened to me? If you've got time to listen to this. And I was telling her this story and she starts crying. And I thought, well, it's really touching her. And, and she says, let me tell you what that means to me. She says, today 
is the anniversary of a phone call I got from the military saying that my fiance was killed in Afghanistan. And she says, when my phone rang to receive that news, I was bending over, picking up a white feather off the ground. Wow. Yeah, wow. I just got chills again. I, just, I, I, yeah. I know. If, if people would just look around at the obvious, it, it you know, it's right in front of them. I know. But, uh, Very good. Oh, let me, say, let me say goodbye to the bird. Can I say goodbye to the okay. bird? Okay. Right, put me on okay. speaker there. Hey, hey, Gator Bird, I got to go. Anything else you want to leave us with? You want to finish hey. with a prayer, Bird? Go ahead. Say bye-bye. She blew you a kiss. I heard that little... <laughs> 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 then there was Larry. He provided the red feather. There was a lady who was talking about dimes. You know, she kept finding all these dimes. And, uh, and for me, it just, one popped into my head, and it was, you know, my grandmother passed away. And she's like uh, just a very spiritual person and, and devout Roman Catholic, like prayer warrior type woman. And, you know, she spends more time, she would spend more time at mass and just going into church than, than really doing anything else. So my grandmother, she was diagnosed with perinatal cancer. And, and I was there the morning she did pass away. And, and mom goes to see her, my mom and dad go and see her and, and, so he, she whispers something to her and then like maybe five or 10 minutes go by and then she just passes away. This, I forget what day it was, February 11th she passed and they were Actually, going you to, know what? That's, that's not just any day, by the way. It's not? No. That's the, uh, that's the feast of our, um, of our Lady of Lourdes. Uh, Seriously? Yeah. So, so that's, a, that's, a, that's a great Marian day. Mary appeared to uh, St. Bernadette in Lourdes, France. Which brings about wow. you know the healing waters and all that kind of good stuff. So so that's wow, that not just like that's chills. <laughs> yeah, that's not just any day. That's not just any day. That's a great day. Wow. So yeah, so that that blew my mind right there. But um, so so she passes away, and later in the night, my dad asks my mom. She's like, "Hey, I didn't was didn't want to ask, but what what did you say to your mom before she passed?" And my mom's like, "Oh, you know, I just told her that her fight here is done, and she doesn't need to hang on anymore." And that she can, she can let go and go home and be with dad and, and everybody, you know, that, that has passed before her. Take your time. Don't feel like you need to be rushed. But when you get to heaven, uh, send me a, send me a sign. And if you could send me a cardinal. There are so many stories about cardinals appearing after somebody passes. It's kind of a sign of mm -hmm. uh, a message from heaven. When a cardinal oh, really? shows up, I know there's somebody I know who they said, you know, please send a cardinal. And the next day they found 18 of them in the backyard. And it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> we've never even seen a cardinal back. All of a sudden there were 18 of them. So, yeah. so sometimes they make themselves known. Yeah. 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 So she, you know, she said, send me a cardinal. And, and just to clarify, she's like, mom, it's not, not the bluebird. It's, you know, it's the, it's the red one. From when she passed to when her funeral was, it was like two weeks. So maybe about a week or so after she passed away, my uncle, my dad's brother, just kind of visit and, and see them. So my, and his name's Joe and Joe's like, well, I've been kind of experimenting and doing these new, this new hobby. I just was going to show you what I've been working on. So he pulls out this vanilla, vanilla envelope and pulls this picture out. And it's a, it's a, it's a red cardinal sitting on a branch. He painted it. So like he's been working on becoming a painter, I guess. And, his new hobby he's been painting and he painted a cardinal and my dad's his jaw just drops. My dad calls my mom. She runs in the room and then they just both burst into tears. And like my uncle Joe's like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you cry. You know, they're like, no, you don't understand. And they told him and like, everybody's like in tears at this point. Like Joe was the vehicle of, you know, Hey, I made it. But until I started listening to your podcast, that was like, I was like, oh, you know what? This would be a great thing to share with, with Trapper. So Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks, Larry. There's our red feather, our red cardinal feather. Then came the blue of the red, white, and blue feathers we had back in that episode, uh, 118, if you want to go take a look. But uh, it was Marianne. She had lost her daughter, Sapphire. And uh, they, um, after a period of time, they were going. They were going to go on this family vacation, but just before that happened, their dog Sparky died. And while they were burying the dog, they were having a funeral in the backyard. 
this amazing event happened, kind of connecting Sparky and Sapphire and the family? We we go through the backyard. We we all cross the same path, and we bury Sparky. We say a few prayers. We're all in a rush. We have this big f- trip to go on. And so we say a few prayers, and we turn around, and within five feet from us, like right there, right exactly the path that we had all just crossed, there's about 80 to 100 blue jay feathers, all upright and all in, in like in a circular pattern. And we're just standing there going like, how, how did this get here? Like, we've only been a few minutes praying and um, just uh, 80 to 100 feathers. Standing up? Yes. I mean, like upright. like on their, on their points with their feathers yes. up. Yes, in a circular pattern. And we just, we were dumbfounded. We couldn't, like, it's hard to accept. Like, it was like, we just didn't know how to think about it. And because so it's then, impossible. How do you wrap your head yes. around something so impossible? My husband's like, yeah, he's like, I've been crossing this path back and forth, you know, with the shovel, digging this hole. It, I assure you, it hasn't been here. I, and I said, Timothy, we all passed the path to, to pray for, for Sparky. It, it just got here. So Timothy's like, well, I, I got to put the shovel away. You know, like, I got to get going. And he starts to run off. And I said, no, you come here and witness this. My my husband has faith, but like, you know, he's more, he's a, he's a, he's a doctor. So he's very scientific oriented. So if you, you know, I like come and witness this, you come and look at this. <laughs> this does not compute. I'm leaving. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, that's why people, you know, struggle with faith because when sure. things hit them, sometimes they don't want to look at it. You know, yeah, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit it. my belief system. It, I got, I got to go. I got and an atheist or not, not that your husband is, but that's why, the, that's why when something so miraculous happens, they just put it on the shelf and say, well, no one can, can comprehend that or understand it. And they try to move on. It's like, no, look at it, stare at it, figure that out. Exactly. And so I said, do you see any feathers that are not upright? And he's like, no. And he's quite like, no. <laughs> like, I said, Timothy, look at this. Look at this. Like, how, how can we explain this? And he's like, I, I don't know. And so. Well, the were they, is, did they, did they like, were they like planted almost in the ground, but not, but not? They want, you know, and when we turned around, all of us, the feathers are right there. And uh, that moment we all turned, they were all perfectly there. And they were all in this circular pattern in the blades of grass. Like they were acting like blades of grass. And that was the miracle part. Like, Timothy, look, do you see one that's not, that's flat, that's not upright, like a blade of grass? And he said, no. At, at this point in your life, do blue jay feathers mean anything to you? Yes and no. Like, a sapphire's name is Sapphire, so it's ironic she picked a blue fox uh, bird, right? Okay. Uh, that was one thing. But in our family, she was the bird of our family. Um Aria is the kitty cat. Like if I got them, like, you know, like when they were little girls, if I got them a little something, it, I would get Sapphire, like let's say a, a necklace with a bird on it. And I would get Aria one with a kitty cat. Like Sapphire was the bird in our family. So that was beautiful. And I held on to that. Like, okay, she's okay. Like this doesn't, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Cause I was really worried about her soul. But there's more Um, to this story, isn't there? Yes. (laughs) Yes. We have this super early flight to Dallas and we arrive in Dallas and we call an Uber driver to pick us up. And this young man picks us up and he's in his early twenties. We get, we slide in the car and there is a blue jay feather taped to his dashboard. And I was like, (laughs) what? (laughs) What? (laughs) Yes. And I, I mean, I just lit up right away, like, oh, this might be, you know. And so we're driving along and we're talking a little bit. And I said, uh, excuse me, can you tell me the story behind your blue jay feather? And he says, oh, he's like, it's the craziest thing. I walk up to my car and this feather is right there, right in front of my car. Just this one blue jay feather. And I picked it up and I put it in my car because Everyone knows that blue jay feathers are a good omen from God. And I was like, oh, you know, I never heard that before. So I was like, wow. And then he says, God is just so great. He's such a loving 
he's such a loving God that he gives us signs of his love in different creative ways. And this is one of the ways he does it through blue jay feathers. And I said, wow, I, I said, I need to tell you my story. So I tell him the story of Sparky and Sapphire and the blue jay feathers. And he gets really quiet. And he says, um, he says, ma'am, I'm so sorry for your loss, but I just want to say that, that Jesus loves you and you need to see it from Jesus's perspective. And I, and I was like, wow, that's wisdom. I thought, what are the odds that out of the hundreds of Uber drivers that we could have had pick us up, I get one with a feather. It's nice to get that reassurance, isn't it? It's nice to get that uh, reassurance. Like it's, it's important to grieve death, you know, the loss is there, but, but at the same time, we shouldn't be destroyed by it because, I mean, if we really believe in God, then our, then our loved ones are, are, are in a better place. Yeah. So we can grieve the loss, but not be destroyed by the grief. Waxing nostalgic here about feathers, butterflies, and birds. We're going to get back to Esther, actually, because she received another incredible message, not associated with birds, but in another form, coming up in a moment here on Touch by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. Quick Patreon shout-out. Thanks, Mark. Mark Smith. Appreciate your help on a monthly basis, joining our Patreon family and keeping this all going. If you'd like to do the same, uh, please come here to episode 195 of touchbyheaven.net and click your way through, or you can go to patreon.com. That's where, I have the, and thank you, Patreon. You know, just thank you. Thank you, Patreon, for uh, making this available. Uh, patreon.com, search for Trapper Jack, and uh, thanks for joining the Patreon family. I appreciate that. You know, one of the things, um, before we get back to Esther, uh, in, in fact, this episode really kind of speaks of it, how God does speak, and he can do it in so many different ways and reassure us in so many different ways about, about our loved ones. And often we do miss his messages. Not everybody catches feathers and, and, and things that seem so obvious as we do them here on the show. And so there are a couple of CD downloads here at touchbyheaven.net. One is called, Did You Hear What God Just Said? And it's all about this. It's my own personal stories and other big stories of just how God is talking to us and most of the conversations flying over our head. And once we realize it's going on, we grab those messages. We can, we can hear those messages. So did you hear what God just said? is available here at touchbyheaven.net, as well as Mary, his messenger. Again, about her messages, Jesus keeps sending his mom, and uh, sometimes those messages are flying over our heads, too, if we're not paying attention. So both of those available as a CD or a download. Did you hear what God just said? And Mary, his messenger, here at touchbyheaven.net. Come here to episode 195, okay? All right, let's get back. Let's get back to Esther, because she received another incredible message from heaven. And remember, Kevin was always wondering, how, how are you, get, why are you, how are you getting these messages and I'm not? He, he was a very good person, but he was definitely a diamond in the rough. Um, his history, he came from a very dysfunctional family. All of the kids in his family were adopted and he never truly felt that his parents loved him. Um, and so when we had our own children, by the way, all of our children were adopted, uh, we had to go through um, the home studies and everything like that. And a lot of his childhood trauma came back and the social worker confided in me that she almost didn't approve us for an adoption because of everything that came out with Kevin um, I would think that once he saw how you guys were approaching the, the children, he would see that there was love, that he, he was love, but he just, was he taking too much to heart the rejection of the birth mother? Mm, no, actually, my mother-in-law was not a very nice person. <laughs> uh, I made peace with her. I was able to help Kevin make peace with both of his parents um, before they passed. Because I told him, I said, you know, they came from a different generation. They came through the war. His mom was a war bride. Um, she was never accepted by uh, my father-in-law's family. So there was just a lot of very negative things happening. Um, and he was strong and independent and working. And I said, 
he would make a great dad and uh, traditional. You know, neither one of us believed in divorce. He would be the breadwinner. You know, that definitely played a part into us getting together. And then, you know, I did find that deep down under that rough exterior, there was a very good, kind person. That Who was, was seeking. Yeah. Yeah. I have gotten messages from the other side. And he was like, well, why can't I? And I'm like, well, I'm not saying you can't. I says you have to be open to it and you have to be quiet and listen. I said, God does not, in my opinion, God does not come down with neon lights saying, here's your sign. <laughs> you know, you have to listen for the whispers and, and he comes in the quiet. What would be an uh, example of one of those moments for you? Um, my sister's first husband died in a car accident and he came to me um, and told me that I would have a baby boy. Of course, I didn't get pregnant, and so I just pushed it aside as maybe I was dreaming. I don't know. I tossed it off. But um, the following summer, I read in the church bulletin about an adoption thing. And, of course, having adopted our two daughters, your your eyes always go to that word. It's like, oh, what's this about? So I asked Kevin, I said, hey, you interesting in adopting again? And he was so excited. He goes, I didn't think you would want to, but yeah. So we started the home study process. And in a nutshell, um, the birth mom um, chose us and our son was due the anniversary of my brother-in-law's car accident. You don't see and coincidence in that. <laughs> I see a God wink, a yeah. big God wink. And I had told Kevin when the birth mother called to talk with us and she said that she knew she was having a boy and his due date, I just nearly dropped the phone and I told Kevin, I said, this is our baby. And, and he goes, what are you talking about? And I said, uh, Joe told me about this. And he goes, why didn't you ever tell me? And I said, because I didn't think you would believe me. <laughs> and how did Joe do that? Dream? Um, not really a dream. Um, it was at night when I was praying, you know, before I went to bed. So it wasn't your voice. It was, right. you knew who it was. Yes. The message just was, you're going to have a baby boy. That was it. And you knew it was him. That was it. And I knew it was him. And when I think back to when it was, it was nine months later, we had our son so it was like the message came <laughs> when probably when the birth mom conceived is That's what I'm a, wow. That's yeah, a wow. Because, be, yeah, because when Joe said that, you know, the first thing I could think of, you know, the time span was, oh my God. Um, and and I told him I was in tears when he gave me the message. And I, I said to him, Joe, you didn't have to die for this to happen. But then I realized he didn't die for it to happen. He was just the messenger. <laughs> and nine months later, on the day anniversary of the day he died, you get your son. Mm-hmm. Wow. So How do you not see that, right? I know not everybody yeah. does. I mean, oh, that's just one of those. No, no, that's, there's, a, there's too big a message there. Wow. Yeah. That's so awesome. I, I'm, I'm really big on God wings, and of course— I would share these with Kevin, and then he's like, well, how come I never get those? And I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I says, not everyone, you know, is receptive to hearing these messages. I says, I just happen to be one of those people that are open to it, and I... So what's our, what's our takeaway in all this? What do, we, what do we learn by your butterfly story and your, your nine-month gestation? You know? Right. <laughs> um, didn't have to stop drinking wine. I mean, yeah, you know. It just reaffirms, you know, that God is with us and he takes care of us and he's keeping watch over us. And actually, when Kevin was going through all of his chemo and all, I kept telling him, I said, you're lucky you're going home first. I says, obviously, you've already learned your lesson, and there's something else I still have to learn before I can join you. So that's my take. Thanks, Esther. The Brittany of her day. 
Very simple message again. Blue butterflies from heaven. Red, white, and blue feathers from heaven. Roses. We've had roses on the beach. We've had dimes all over the place. We've had phones ringing that aren't connected to the wall. We've had, I'm just, I'm just flashing through. We've had texts received from loved ones. Uh, let's see, what else? Departed loved ones. We've had everything. God just uses uh, it's, it's this wide canvas that is his, that is his creation in ways of saying to us, yes, there's an afterlife. And yes, I have your loved one with me. No worries, you know? So thank you. Thank you again, Esther. What is your story? Let me know here at touchedbyheaven.net if you'd be so kind. And also thank you again for coming here to episode 195 for Did You Hear What God Just Said? And Marry His Messenger as downloads or CDs. More about this communication of how God is speaking to us and uh, catching more of those messages. All right. I'll see you next week here at Touched by Heaven. Everyday Encounters with God. I'm Trapper Jack.